Jaundice is a term used to describe yellowing of the skin. It is actually hyperbilirubemia, which is high levels of bilirubin in the blood. Another word for jaundice is icteric. I-C-T-E-R-I-C, -E -E icteric. And that's a word that's used to describe jaundice as well. When the bilirubin levels are greater than 2.5 milligrams per deciliter, that's when you're able to see it on the skin. Bilirubin is a byproduct of red blood cell breakdown. When the red blood cells break down, bilirubin is released. Some of the bilirubin is attached to albumin in the blood, and that is called the indirect bilirubin. And some of it is just free flowing traveling to the small bowel for excretion, and that is called the direct bilirubin. There are three types of jaundice. The first one is hemolytic. Hemolytic jaundice is when there is excessive red blood cell breakdown, and that would be an indicator of a high indirect bilirubin. This is mainly present in newborn babies. So newborn baby jaundice is very common, and it's because of the birth process and the red blood cells that are being destroyed during the birthing process, or it is very common in premature babies who have had any sort of trauma during delivery. The bruising that they occurs on the head, or whether it is a brain bleed or something of that nature, it, it breaks down red blood cells, and that's hemolytic, means lysis of the blood cells. And the byproduct of that is bilirubin. Newborn babies also have immature livers, which also makes it difficult for them to excrete the bilirubin. The second form of jaundice is hepatocellular. Hepato stands for liver, and then cellular is cells. So there are damaged cells that can't excrete the bilirubin. In this case, we'll have the indirect and the direct bilirubin will both be elevated. So if there is liver disease and liver cirrhosis, this is hepatocellular jaundice. The last one is obstructive jaundice, and this occurs when there is obstructions in the bile ducts, such as gallstones or gallbladder stones, or there are strictures or tumors within the gallbladder or gallbladder ducts. So therefore, the bilirubin cannot leave the gallbladder through the bile ducts because there's an obstruction in the way and that creates an increased direct bilirubin. To assess for jaundice, the nurse should check three places, on the skin, the sclera, and the mouth. Now the sclera is the white part of the eyes. However, some dark skin ethnicities naturally have a yellow tint sclera, so we cannot confirm uh, with certainty that someone has jaundice just by assessing the whites of the eyes. So if we have a dark skinned person, we want to look in the mouth at the palates of the mouth to check for jaundice. So in dark skinned people, the mouth or palates, mucous membranes is the best place to check for jaundice. Hepatitis can be viral, autoimmune, caused by toxins or certain drugs or medications. The name in itself just means liver inflammation. Let's look at the viral causes. There's viral hepatitis A and E, and that is fecal oral transmission or from food handling. You may have heard the story a few years back of hepatitis A transmission happening in some restaurants up north because of improper food handling of the lettuce that they were serving to customers and it caused an outbreak of hepatitis A. Now, even though it was just a viral uh, hepatitis, it's, it was caused by uh, uncleanliness and food handling. And it is a viral infection, but it is, there's no treatment for the hepatitis A. It just kind of wanes out. The next one is viral hepatitis B, C, and D. Those are all blood-borne diseases, and they can cause cancer. One of the main characteristics or symptoms of hepatitis is right upper quadrant pain and increased liver function test. Healthcare workers are most susceptible to hepatitis B, 
And hepatitis C is usually from IV drug users or people who have had um, blood transfusions from a long time ago. However, hepatitis C has a cure now. They now have a combo drug prescription that can be given for hepatitis C, and I have seen some patients come back uh, with no organisms found for hepatitis C in their system anymore, so they are considered cured. Hepatitis A and B have vaccines. Hepatitis has three phases of infection. The first one is pre-icteric. Remember when we said icteric was another word for jaundice? So this means before jaundice appears on the skin. The symptoms are nausea, vomiting, and anorexia, fever, malaise, in enlarged lymph nodes, a rash, urticaria, and joint pain. In the second phase, jaundice will begin to appear, and that is called the icteric phase. So when jaundice appears, then we're also going to have pruritus. Remember, pruritus is a, a accumulation of bile salts under the skin, which makes them itch. Clay-colored stool and dark urine. In the phase three, the postecteric is when the jaundice begins to subside. In the postecteric phase, there is liver enlargement, and the liver function tests return to normal. The treatment regimen for someone who has hepatitis is different based off of what kind they have because hepatitis C, we can give some combo drugs uh, that will help cure them. But mainly we're gonna be treating the symptoms since it is a virus. IV fluids and rest are recommended. Have a good diet, high calorie, high carb, a moderate protein diet is good for healing. The medications that can be given is ribavirin, Ribavirin is a drug given to treat viral hepatitis. We must remember that this drug can cause birth defects, so any woman of childbearing age must have a backup birth control method when they are on this medication. They will also need routine pregnancy tests to make sure that we're not giving this drug to someone who is pregnant.